welcome to Jaipur, the pink city where food is sweet and spicy. And we made it to Jaipur, the pink city. Guys, yesterday we were in Agra, we went to the Taj Mahal, it was amazing. My second time, one of the wonders of the world, it lives up to that status. It is actually one of the few things, one of the few monuments in the world that I think is better than you actually think it's going to be. I didn't shoot a lot of video and that's because selfishly I wanted to shoot so many photos. It was a fantastic morning and then we made our way here. It is cooler, it is quieter. I think Jaipur is going to be great. Today we're going to do a little bit of food tour, a little bit of sightseeing. We're going to explore the Pink City. All right, we're starting eating on the street. We're on a very busy, loud street where there are a lot of kachori vendors. Kachori is one of the typical foods of Jaipur. Something that Jaipurites, which I think that's what you call them, love to have. And what it is, is it's this kind of flaky pastry. It comes with onion lentils or a combination of both. And then it has this gravy. This gravy smells like it's a little bit minty, maybe a little bit sweet. This is so popular because it's got that crispy, hearty pastry. And then you've got, we chose the onion. It's got this like intense roasted oniony flavor. And then you get a little bit of spice. And then you get the gravy, which is really minty. And that makes it like minty, spicy, hearty, oniony. This is so good. Lots of people selling it on the street along with kakoras and a number of other treats. Wow, this is a great way to start the day. Uber to Amber Fort and I have to tell you our Uber driver was awesome Ooh. thank you so much Karen he gave us tips on local music he told us places to go he told us how to barter he told us the best place to go for gold and that it's half a spot of what people will charge here he told us a good spot to have coffee here I just have to say it was like a very short 10 minute drive and I feel like we had a private tour guide for the price of an Uber trip. And the nice thing about it is Uber here, you actually get a code. They have a code, you start the trip. So it's a very safe way to travel around if you're a little bit worried about security. And now here we are at Amber Port. <laughs> Amber Fort or Amber Fort is the biggest tourist attraction in Jaipur without a doubt. It is massive, it's amazing. You could spend a whole day here. If you're going with a group, that's great because you can get a little bit of information on it. I've been here before. The architecture is stunning. It's absolutely fantastic, so you don't want to miss it. But if you come here, it's a little bit hectic because everybody's going to try to tell you that you need to buy tickets outside or that you need a guide or there's a lot of things. Just keep walking through up to where you buy the tickets. If you want to get a guide, that's great. It's always great to find out more information about what you're seeing, but you can also just walk around. A guide is not compulsory. Right, as we walk up to this beautiful area, I think we need to have a quick conversation about animal tourism. We do not need to be riding elephants. Way more often than not, they are treated horribly. I'm talking 99.99% of the time. We do not need to swim with dolphins. Anytime there's any kind of tourism, even with horses, you really need to look at the operator because I've been on horses before where I thought, wow, I don't think this is right. And so personally for me, I try not to participate in any of that. That said, on this trip, there is a camel ride and that's why I went with a reputable tour operator because I don't know a lot about camel riding, but I wanna make sure that I go with someone that the animals are treated well. But just, just say no to elephants. Look at them from afar. So that was 
interesting. So they're filming a movie here. I guess, I hope it's some kind of period piece since they're on an elephant. I have a feeling that's part of the wedding ceremony, if I understand it correctly. Although I thought they came in on horses, not elephants. But when we first got here, they're like, no, 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 no shooting. And then, of course, they come into this big courtyard and everybody gets their phones out. So if they didn't want anyone to know that they were filming a movie, they should not have gone to a very public tourist place where everybody's got their iPhones out. But that's enough excitement. We're going to go to the actual entrance to see the palace. So this area is huge. It's gorgeous. And actually, even with a lot of people here, right now it's 11 o'clock, I think, almost 12. This is the wrong time to go. You want to get here as early as you can in the morning, around 8 or 9. But last night it rained, and today it's kind of cloudy, which has made it beautiful to come here because even though the sun is out, there's still a lot of cool air, and it's not too sunny. To buy a ticket foreign tourist is 500, foreign student is 100. So if you have a student card, bring it. They do honor that. All right, here we are. Look at this place. Now, if you want to come here and get an empty spot with an Instagram photo, yeah. Although the last time I was here, it was also morning and everyone who wants to take Instagram photos. So I don't think there's a good time to come at all. But right now I have to say, it's pretty good, not too busy. And here's a hot tip. Everyone here is just clamoring to get a picture here. But right next door are these fantastic doors and they make for great pictures. This is the Ganesh Gate and Lord Ganesh is believed to remove obstructions likely to come in the way of humans in their everyday life. And that's why you find him everywhere, especially over the main entry of a building. coming late just because we we needed to sleep in we got up early yesterday for the Taj Mahal but the weather really held up here it wasn't as hot and actually has been very nice but now it's time for lunch Time and we decided to go big. So within Jaipur, one of the most famous things to eat uh, is actually one of the famous things in the area and that's the Rajasthan Thali. It is well known all over India and you can get it many places. Now they say in Jaipur the best place to get it is actually outside the city in this place called Choki Dani, which is like best described as a historic a village called Mini Rajasthan, so it's like a cultural village and they prepared it in the traditional way. But that's outside the city and I don't have a lot of time today, so we're going to eat it here. I'm at LMB, which is Lakshmi. I can't remember the second two names of it, but it's shortened as LMB, so let's stick with that. It's been around since 1727. It's very well known, a lot of locals here. They do uh, regular lunch service, but they also have this royal tali. Now in Rajasthan, you can have a tali with up to 27 dishes. And looking at this royal menu, I don't know how many dishes are coming, but it looks like a lot. It's not a cheap meal. It's probably going to be about 1,000 rupees, but go big or go home. We're going big. We are hungry. The first dish here is a soup. The waiter told us it's a clear lentil ball soup, very traditional of the area. And then he gave us a little bit of what I think is something spicy and some onions. This is my first time eating all of this, guys. So I don't know what everything is, but I am up for eating it. I love lentils. I love lentils in India. These are lentil balls and it looks like we have some onion in here. And so the other thing that's very popular about this spot is that you can also get all the meals prepared without onion or garlic. Mm. Wow. 
so much flavor inside this clear soup. It would kind of remind me a little bit like a French onion soup that has that deep, rich, broth flavor with some onion in it. And then I want to try, oh, this is pickle. They've given us a little bit of pickled vegetables. One of my favorite things here in India. Try a little bit of that. Mmm. Wow. I'm not going to eat all these dishes in front of you because it would totally bore you, but I will give you the highlights. This lentil soup is a very, very good start. So this is quite the experience. You really need to listen to the waiters who are very, very helpful because you get a number of plates on this dish. Some things go with some things, some things go with the other. They explain it to you a few times and they explain to you what's in each dish. This is going to be fantastic. We have our first set of meals, which is lentil, along with these dal. Then we have a dish where we have a chickpea flatbread that goes with other sauces. And then we've got a yogurt curry that goes with rice. And then we have two desserts. And then we also have this chapati, but I can't remember what that goes with, so we're just gonna wing it. And then of course we've got some onion, we've got some pickles, and we have the soups to start with. And I think we're just gonna kinda dig in, probably not do it correctly, but that's okay. So got to try so many different flavors, so many different dishes. I would say the highlight of it was there was a fenugreek date and jackery dish that I learned was one of the most common dishes in this area. And it was delicious. It was like sweet, spicy, rich, but not too rich. I did not like there was a dish that had chickpeas in a milk, but it was like a soured milk. And I've had this flavor before in India and it just, I don't like it. <laughs> so I would say I don't love all of the dishes in India. That's the one thing I probably don't like. Um, but everything else was fantastic. The service here is amazing. And the staff was really helpful with everyone, like showing people how to eat things, explaining what things were. I just think this is a really special spot. Definitely a splurge for us because we're used to eating so much food in the street, but totally worth it. Now, I didn't eat everything because next door they're known for sweets. And while I don't have a sweet tooth, it looks so good there. I just I have to try one thing before we go because after that, we're going to one of the oldest chai shops in all of Jaipur. So total for this meal was $17.32.50. That includes GST, the local tax. Um, and that's two local tallies. We had a lassi. Also this drinking water, which is like the premium brand of the national brand. Apparently it comes from the Himalayas, although I think the regular brand is fine. So far, J Jaipur has been really interesting. I think it might be my favorite city in India so far. We'll see if it continues throughout the day. Just an eight minute walk down the road from the restaurant, you can have chai at one of the oldest tea shops in all of Jaipur. We're at Sahu Chai. And this spot has been around since 1968. A lot of the people who come here say they've been coming since it opened. It is definitely the oldest. I'm not sure if it's one of the best because chai is serious business here and everyone has their favorite spot. It's spicy and warm and delicious. It's really good. So I don't know if it's one of the best, but I think it's worth coming to. Okay, so we got a second one. And we thought, a lot of people in India do speak English quite well. And so we thought maybe we would ask what was in it. I think it's cardamom. You thought it was black pepper, but I don't think it's black pepper. It's not spicy. But uh, they were so funny. At first they thought we were, I think we're trying to pay. And then they were like, oh no, no, no pepper. But I need to learn the Hindi word for cardamom because I think that's what it is. And just like that, it is morning. So yesterday after chai, 
uh, we passed a hair salon, I decided to just take the opportunity and get my hair done. And the funny thing is, the owner actually recognized me from shooting a video in Delhi. So we chatted about that and then we chatted about my hair. One of the things that they said to me was the pollution here is so bad, it really gets into your hair. So before I was washing my hair once a week normally with some dry shampoo, but they said, you know, you really need to take care of it here. I have been washing it every second day, but still they said it was sticky. Anyway, so I spent a couple of hours in the salon. I feel fantastic. And then we came here, the Tattoo Cafe for dinner. It was nighttime, so there wasn't a lot to show you, but I wanted to show you again in morning because this is one of the best spots to get a photo early in the morning. It is the view of the Wind Palace. It's a beautiful spot. A lot of people come here. You do need to get a drink, but the prices here are very reasonable. We've decided to come for breakfast. Now at night, they have a full menu of both Western and Indian food. In the morning, it's pretty much Western food. So you can get smoothie bowls, omelets, uh, pancakes, waffles, that kind of thing. I am not a big Western breakfast person. I prefer the Indian breakfast. So instead, I'm gonna get jam toast and iced Americano and enjoy this view. It is gorgeous. That was a great breakfast, really nice patio, fantastic staff. Get there early in the morning if you want to get pictures. I think we were there around 8.39. Afterwards, it starts to get a bit crowded with people wanting to take pictures. Now, you might be wondering why this is the Pink City, and that's because in the 1800s, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert came to visit. And when they did, to welcome them, they painted the city pink, and then afterwards just decided to keep it that way. It makes it a really photogenic spot, and so great for walking around. It's gorgeous here. Up next, we're headed to the City Palace where it's a complex with a number of different buildings. I haven't been there before, so I think it's a good way to start the morning. All right, we actually scrapped going to the city palace. Don't hate us, but uh, it was 700 each, and we just kind of wanted to go in, walk around a little bit, and leave like maybe half an hour so it didn't make sense for us to spend 1400 this is more expensive than amber fort which was 500 each but it was just we don't have a lot of time today we want to walk around the city and enjoy and for both of us i think what's been so nice about jaipur is that it's just a really easy city it's been our favorite so far easy to walk around people are here are so nice not as loud as the other cities, not as polluted. And so as great as a museum can be, the culture of a city is really in the street. And so that's what we're gonna do. All right, so the new plan is to go to Jahari Bazaar, where we were yesterday. We're at LMB for lunch, and Alan lost his mind because there is a slang word in Indonesian that he saw as the name of a cake. He's been laughing about it for 24 hours. like dying laughing let me show you he's laughing about it right now <laughs> but also Jahari Bazaar is a great place to shop there are lots of bazaars in the area and Jaipur is known to have some really great handicrafts so it's known for its blue pottery its textiles clothing it's known for its jewelry uh, paintings this is really like an art town which makes it really great and so I would much rather walk around and look at handicrafts maybe do a little bit of shopping I'm sure that museum is great but it's not gonna be as good as watching Alan laugh again about this cake I have to go back and see it in Hindi I believe it means big and in Indonesian I'm gonna let you guys look that up. I'll put the link to the video below. <laughs> but he's, he laughs at it. Dying, he's still dying about this cake. So I gotta go see it. I've said so many times that I don't love sweets, but actually I really do like trying them in other countries. And in India, they have really interesting ones. Some are too sweet, but a lot are not. 
And so in Rajasthan, they have a lot of very typical sweets that are interesting. The first one I'm going to try is the kachori mawa. Mawa kachori. And so it's like the kachori I had for breakfast yesterday, but this is actually a dessert kachori. And so inside there's mawa, which is like a cheese, a dairy product. It's a little bit thicker than uh, ricotta. It has a higher, I guess, liquid fat content. And then it's in this sweet syrup. Mmm. Oh, there's fruit and I think nuts in the middle. Mmm. It's warm. Yeah, definitely nuts. I think there's some almonds in here. Mmm. How it works here is there's a woman standing by the counter. You decide on what you want, you tell her, she writes it down, you pay, and then you get a ticket, and then they give it to you. And so, for this, they don't just serve it to you cold, which I thought that they would just give it to you and you kind of bite into it like a snack, but then they put this yellow syrup on it that I think has a little bit of orange in it and cardamom, and then they heat it up for you and they warn you that it's hot when they give it to you. Mmm, it's like, like a warm pie. It's crispy on the outside and on the inside, delicious with like a fruit and nut. Mmm. Now, the next one we got, I'm not sure if it's typical from here. I think it's actually more of a typical Indian sweet. And this is Madame Gunjia. <laughs> I looked it up, Madame means almond. And I believe this is a white chocolate. Actually just a very light, Almondy sweet, not too sweet at all. That's interesting. Mm. Slivered almonds. And then finally, this is a dish that Alan did a double take when he saw this. This is anjir. Anjir means fig. So this is a fig and it looks like it also has some almonds in it. In Indonesia, anjir is a slang term that is not good. And so when he saw it was Angier cake, he took a double take. And then he's been laughing about it forever that he came all the way to India to have an Angier cake. Anyway, this is what it is. You can also get it without sugar. Mm. It's like a fig and almond roll. Now you notice there is like a foil on it. I asked first. It's edible, it's a silver foil. You, you can actually eat it. So I think this was definitely worthwhile to come back in here a second time in two days. We tried these three sweets and they were only 190 rupees. You could definitely come in here and try a lot of different sweets. They have so many things here. Staff is so friendly in helping you choose and figuring out kind of the ordering system. I'm so glad we came back. on this market, that side of the street is all of the clothing, jewelry, textiles. And then on this side of the street is all of the food. There are so many different kinds of pasta, beans, dried fruits, nuts. I don't know which side I like better. I kind of like this side better. going to have here in Jaipur is kulfi. Now I don't think kulfi is actually from Jaipur, I think it might be from Delhi, but in Jaipur I saw tons of street vendors in the night and then also this spot. Kulfi is like ice cream but not quite. So ice cream is custard that has been whipped, this is not whipped and so that means that it actually lasts longer in the sun, it won't melt as fast. Here they only had two options today. It was either plain or this is pistachio with saffron, 35 rupees each. It's just like a nice creamy treat. Normally comes in a lot of traditional flavors. So I think the next spot, I'm gonna try a little bit more. This is good, but it's not great. But you should definitely look for one of the kulfi vendors when you're here because they're all along the street in the evening. And so I think we're gonna have a good one soon. And sadly, this ends this video in Jaipur. I would say so far, this is actually my favorite city in India. I love all the handicrafts, the food, that mixture of the sweet and the spicy. The people are so nice. 
And then today is Saturday, so it's a little bit hectic, but this is a more relaxed kind of city. It has a more relaxed vibe, and I really love it. I have a feeling I'm going to be back in Jaipur someday soon. So if you have suggestions for me, things that I should do the next time, please let me know in the comments below. And in the next video, I will see you again in India. Join my Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.